Hello, my name is Dr. Martin Hughes, and if you're watching this video, hopefully you're interested in attending our bio blitz that we are putting on on Saturday the 28th of April. This is just a short video to outline the day, and if you're interested, please sign up and come along. It'd be great to see you. And this isn't a public event, it's open to everybody, uh, including children. So if you want to bring the family along, please do. So what is a bio blitz? Well, a bio blitz is an event in which participants count all the living things in a given area, that's the bio, and in a short amount of time, that's the blitz. So we're gonna be basically collecting data, information on a bunch of animals in a certain location for a certain amount of time. And as I said, this public event, everybody's welcome, bring the family, it's free. Um, the more people, the merrier, that'd be great. Where are we doing the bio blitz? It's actually gonna be in the Boundary Road Reserve also sometimes called the Kangaroo Reserve because it's absolutely chock full of kangaroos. And the Boundary Road Reserve, for those that don't know, um, is just behind Charles Sturt University on the way out to Blaney. So it's not that far from the town centre. What we'll be doing is we'll be parked, uh, we'll be starting in the car park of CSU. I'll give you more information on that later on. And then we'll be going into the reserve and doing a big loop on the Saturday morning. So why are we going to do the bio blitz now? Well, the majority of the vegetation in the Boundary Road Reserve was planted by the Landcare Group in 1998. Uh, it's now 2018, so that's 20 years later. And what we can do now is look at the impact of that plantation and see how many species are in the reserve now. So it's a great opportunity for us to collect some baseline data. And the more people we have, the more data we can collect. So it's going to be a fun day, but it's also going to be informative for a, bunch of, a whole bunch of reasons. The main thing we're going to be doing is classification. We also call this taxonomy. So we're going to survey the area and classify as many of the living things as possible to at least group level, uh, species level if possible, and we can do that later on. By the end of the bio blitz, we'll have collated all the information and have a tally mark for the number of yellow box trees, the ribbon gums, kangaroos, the bird species, everything, all the living organisms um, in the reserve. Not absolutely every single blade of grass, but a really good indication of the number of species that we have in the reserve. So what are the main classes we're going to be looking at? Well, the main classes of animals are mammals, birds, fish, reptiles, amphibians and invertebrates. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say there's probably no fish in the reserve. Um, but we'll put vegetation in there instead because there's lots of vegetation. And basically... If you do come along to the bio blitz, you'll be put into one of these teams that is going to look at a specific group of animals. So we have our Galah team. The Galah team is going to go out and try and count as many bird species in the reserve as possible. We're going to have our mammal team, calling them the Roos, because realistically the majority of mammals are going to uh, count as the kangaroo. There's a lot in there. The koalas are going to count the vegetation. And the cicadas have got quite a broad uh, spectrum because we know that there's going to be a lot of invertebrates. Uh, we might see a few reptiles and it's been very, very warm recently so we're not sure how many amphibians we'll see moving around but there is amphibians in there so the cicadas were kind of lumping a lot into that group um, because they'll be looking at the same sort of habitat. All these species operate around the same level. So in each team, there could be multiple people in the team, but we've got um, four key roles that need to be fulfilled. We're going to have a team leader. So we're going to have somebody with overall responsibility for the members of that team and making sure they're sticking to time. So as we said, we're doing the bio blitz. So we're looking at the living organisms. We, won't, we want to blitz it. We're not going to be there for nine, nine hours. We want to maybe do it in three and a half, four hours. And that means if we come to do this again in another year, we can do three and a half to four hours. It keeps the, the process standardized so that when we repeat this experiment, as it were, we do another three and a half, four hours, and that keeps everything kind of fair. And also it means we can get all of this done in the morning. So the team leader will be responsible for making sure everyone's moving around at a proper pace and overall responsible for everyone in the group. <coughs> Second to that, we'll have a scribe. Uh, the scribe will maintain a field journal for the bio blitz. Um, this is important for some of our, our students at CSU and they'll be writing down all the information about the day, the time, the location, any interesting notes that they take, maybe some sketches, um, any information that they may seem uh, see as relevant will be put down in this field journal. And we'll also have a data sheet, which I'll show you in a little second as well. 
Third, we have a photographer. So if you have, everyone has a smartphone, so if you can take as many photos as possible, as many people in the group can be the photographer, but we do need to have at least one dedicated photographer in each group. They can photograph some of the animals if it's safe to do so, photograph the team, photograph anything that they may want to sort of identify later on if we don't know what it is, and we can safely take a photograph, that'd be fantastic. And the fourth person we're gonna have is the collector. So the collector is gonna take samples, potentially for the invertebrate team um, and maybe the vegetation team. Again, if we can't identify on the spot, you can maybe take a sample, we'll provide the kit, and you come back and we identify it before we release it back into the wild where we found it. So they have overall responsibility for the kit. If one team has slightly more kit than another, then quite happy for you to split that among the group. Um, so it's fair, but we will have a collector who again has overall responsibility for any samples taken and the, the kit that we will give out. We're gonna have lots of bird species. Um, we've got lots of amazing birds, that's one of the Amazing things about Australia is the diversity, the colorations. We have fairy wrens, rosellas, thornbills, of course, galahs and parrots. So hopefully we'll see a lot of these animals in the reserve. The mammals we may expect to see, definitely eastern grey kangaroos, potentially see some flying foxes. The, the other three species are obviously nocturnal, but the flying foxes are roosting uh, in McHattie Park. So if we get lucky, we might stumble across um, a colony of bats. Uh, sugar glider, I'd be really surprised if we see any of them. They're obviously nocturnal, but who knows? And again, that's the same with the brush tail possum, but they could be there. So the Roo team may come back and surprise us. That's the whole point. We don't know what we're going to find, um, but definitely I'd put money on majority of the mammals we'll see are kangaroos. Amphibians and reptiles then. We have the common froglet, marsh frog, jacky lizards, and bullinger skink. So we've got plenty of amphibians and reptiles. They're obviously a little bit more cryptic. They'll be harder to see. Um, so that team, the cicadas, will be looking at that in addition to the multiple invertebrate species. So this will probably be our largest team. Um, we're going to have lots of different spider species, potentially praying mantises, cockroaches, everything in between. Um, you'll know more than me the amount of invertebrate species that exist, um, particularly in the Boundary Road Reserve. It's very diverse. One of the most um, prevalent species across Australia that I've noticed and particularly in the reserve when I've been walking around is the ant species. There's 15,000 worldwide um, and 1,300 of those have been described in Australia and there's absolutely tons of them in the Boundary Road Reserve. So I think it's going to be fairly impossible to count every single ant in the reserve. So what we're actually going to do is we can count a few of them but we're going to count the nests, the mounds. So particularly when you get into the really wooded area there's plenty of mounds in there. Um, so we want to maybe take a note of the, just a tally mark of the mounds, but we can maybe be a little bit more sophisticated than that and maybe get a GPS location. I think that'd be really interesting. So if you haven't seen a mound, uh, it's fairly, fairly obvious. Just this big brown patch, usually writhing in the ants. And what we can maybe do is if we can get a GPS location for each one of the nests, we can maybe plot that and start to look at the, the network between the, the mounds, which would be really, really interesting. And that's not too hard. Uh, we download certain apps that I'm gonna put up in a little second, like Google Earth. Um, as long as we're not standing on the ant's nest, but standing close enough to it uh, when it's safe, then we can maybe get a really accurate latitude and longitude, and we can maybe plot that later on. So that's something I think we could maybe do, which is a bit more interesting. So apps I'd recommend to, to download before we come to the BioBlitz, Definitely Google Earth. If you're going to be in a cicadas team, I'd, I'd recommend everybody downloads that. Um, if you're bringing children along, which we encourage you to do, uh, we have Quest again. So John Harper, my colleague from uh, CSU down in uh, Wagga, told me about this. It's fantastic. You can take a photograph of an animal, you upload it um, to the, the app, and you gain points based on the amount of animals you can uh, upload and identify. There's quests on there, so it could keep your children occupied. Hopefully they're having a good time anyway, but we can um, sort of bridge the gap between nature and technology, which is so important these days. So I'd really recommend that. They're both free. Have a look at Quest again before you, you come out and play around with it so you're familiar. But yeah, I'd really recommend you use that. So what are our data sheets going to look like? Well, it's pretty simple. We're just going to get a tally mark of the number of grey kangaroos if you're in the Roo team. Sugar gliders, I'm being maybe optimistic by saying we get two flying foxes. So 
if we come across any animal, we want to just tick it once and count that animal once and uh, just in the form of a tally mark. And that's basically it. That's what we're going to be doing the whole time as we walk through the reserve is counting the amount of species, uh, the, uh, the amount of individuals that belong to that species. So it's nothing too complicated. Um, but this is why we're going to have a field journal as well, why we have a dedicated scribe. The field journal, we could maybe write down the tally marks, as in this example here, but we can get a lot more information about the day, um, not just the raw data. We could maybe draw some illustrations, write some notes, anything that was important um, about the day, and it gives us a little bit more of a in-depth um, you know, indication of what was going on on the BioBlitz two weeks, a month, a year from now, we can look back at these field journals and um, extract some more information. So we're going to encourage, we'll, we'll provide this and uh, encourage the scribe to take as much information as possible. And again, we can document it in other ways. So everyone that said before has got a smartphone, please take as many photographs as you can, videos, whatever you think. Um, we want to try and build this up and, and keep it going. This will be the first one. Hopefully we can do several more in the future. Other ways we're going to document it, the, the children that are going to be attending, we're going to encourage them to submit um, some sort of feedback on the day. That could be through artwork, it could be through a poem, it could be through whatever means that they want to sort of capture the day and describe the day that they had. And there will be prizes. So again, another incentive to bring your family. I've, uh, I'll see how much my budget can stretch, but I think I've got $20, $20 at the moment, potentially $30. So whoever is going to have the best feedback, whatever children uh, submits the best picture or the best poem, they're going to win a voucher for Annie's ice cream parlour. So that's another bit of motivation. So you might get some free ice cream out of it. So again, just to reiterate, we're going to be in the Boundary Road Reserve um, beside Charles Sturt University. We're going to be starting off in this car park here, which is the residential area. So I'll give you all this information again in an email if you sign up to come to the BioBlitz and um, we'll give you all the, the, the details that are important for the day. Um, but let's just look at the boundary reserve. So we're starting down here and we're going to have a little spot. You'll see, we'll have a gazebo hopefully and you can uh, see where we're starting. And then we're going to go around the reserve this way in a clockwise motion. So we're not going to be going deviating off track. We're not going to be going through the bush. Um, obviously we know there's snakes and we want to keep everyone safe um, the point is we're not going to count every blade of grass, we know that what we are going to do, and so we can repeat the experiment again, is go around the pathway that already exists it's a great path, we'll go around that anti-clockwise, we'll send the bird team out first because um, they're going to have to be out the earliest, then the mammal team, then the insect reptile team and then the vegetation team so it'll be kind of staggered stages depending what team you're part of, we'll send you out at a different time. Um, so the bird team will be first. We need to be there for sunrise because uh, that's when the birds are kind of waking up and, and moving around. So yeah, we're going to look at the areas adjacent to the pathway on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the path. Uh, we'll maybe talk about maybe like a metre in from the path is as far as we'll go. And the team leader, again, will have ultimate responsibility you don't need a Scotsman to tell you um, about the snakes. You guys will be well aware of the snakes. So we don't want anyone going into grass that they can't see, putting their hands anywhere that they, they can't see. We just need to be clever about it as well. Um, so that's it. We'll, we'll talk about health and safety as well on the day. I'm hopefully going to give another lecture. I will give another lecture um, in person on the week beginning the 23rd. So I haven't got a specific date or room yet, but if you sign up on the mailing list, then... I'll, I'll email that out to you and if you can attend that's fantastic and please share this video with anyone you think may be interested so the hub little spot will be here not to be confused with the cafe on Keppel Street we're going to have a hub down here um, with a gazebo where I'll be standing and telling everyone what to do and hopefully people if they have samples they can bring them back there and we can do some identification so you will see the gazebo um, when you park your car in the CSU car park we'll have something like this hopefully and just to reiterate for the bird team, um, on the 28th, we have a predicted sunrise about 6.30 a.m. So I would encourage you to be there for 10 past, quarter past six. I'll probably set up about 6 a.m. Um, so if you're there about quarter past, 20 past, that'd be fantastic. And the whole team can then leave at 6.30. 
and then we'll do the Rue team after that, maybe about seven. So it is an early start, um, but we will be finished maybe by midday um, and we can give you guys some feedback. So yeah, it's an early start, but we're not there the whole day. That's the point. We want to get everything done um, in the morning. So if we did repeat this, we could we could stick to this day, uh, the same time frame, which is important. So there will be a lecture the week before, um, the week beginning of the 23rd. Again, if you sign up, I'll give you that information. Uh, we'll make sure all the teams are happy with what they're doing. I'll give additional information about health and safety and equipment that you guys will be using. And please use the sign-up sheet in the description of this video to ensure your place. Um, I'm hoping it's going to be popular. I'm not sure how popular it's going to be. But we, if you sign up, it means I can make sure we've got enough equipment uh, for everybody. And it gives me a good indication about how many people are actually going to turn up on the day. I can assign you into teams, that sort of thing. So please sign up as soon as you can and send it to anyone that wants to come along. Um, yeah, so that's it. I hopefully see you there. Um, it'd be great to see you sign up. You put your email address in there, I'll, I'll drop you an email confirming your place. And yeah, it's going to be a great day. Bring the family. Uh, we're going to be talking about animals. We're going to have different sort of experts there talking about the birds, the insects, people that know more than me um, about Australian wildlife. It's, it's going to be a good laugh. So please get involved and yeah, hope to see you there. Cheers.